Welcome back to House and Verses, and today we're talking old hairy hands himself, Richard Keys. Come on down, fuck with. Righty then. So, Richard Keys has got a back catalogue. You probably call it more than that, actually, but he's got a, a bit of a back catalogue of saying absolute wibble. This one's a great one, because he, he, he comes out with it um, like it's the solution to everyone's problems. And he's like, I've been thinking about this for a long old time. Let me give you my solution. So we're like, all right, Richard. Let's all fucking hear it then, shall we? United are no longer in a position whereby if top players become available, they're going to sign for United. They're just not. They're just not going to sign for Manchester United anymore. They can't go out and do what they once did, which was sign everybody else's best player, just because it weakened the opposition and they could, you know, maybe put them in amongst a squad of 22 for a little while. Now, just got to stop you there a little minute. Just, just one moment while I stop you there. He seems to squeeze this one in and think that we wouldn't notice, right? We noticed. Manchester United used to be able to buy people weaken in the opposition and put them amongst our squad of 22 for a while. When the fuck did that happen? Ever? Ever? The last time I remember United buying anyone of note from Premier League opposition was Robin Van Persie. Don't think he was just shunted amongst the rest of them in the squad, was he? Like, are you suggesting that we just buy opposition players that are smashing it in the Premier League and then ice them? Because when did that happen? What level of imagination land is this? Because it's never happened. When we signed Wayne Rooney, did he just get doshed amongst the squad? Michael Carrick, doshed amongst the squad. Rio Ferdinand, doshed amongst the squad. Carlos Tevez, when he was the lone thing, was he just doshed amongst the squad? When Manchester United buy someone from within the Premier League, they play. Even Alan Smith played. I, I couldn't let that go because it's... Anyway, he proceeds. In my view, Manchester United should go now to Leverkusen and they should say to Xabi Alonso no chance we want you to come to Old Trafford we will give you Saudi league money and we will guarantee you five years which Fergie had when he first went to Manchester United whatever else happens you've got five years to sort this out for us right then now what he's proposing here is to give a manager five years why would you sack the guy that you've got in charge to give another guy five years. Why wasn't Oli given five years? Why wasn't Jose given five years? Why wasn't Eric Ten Hag given five years? I agree with Moyes not getting five years. But why weren't these people given five years? And what the hell has Xabi Alonso done? And I, I'm with you, mate, right? I am, for once, I am with you. Xabi Alonso is the current hipster favorite manager. He's doing absolutely sensational things with Leverkusen. But if we have to roll it back, Here's the hipster manager list, right? You go, right now it's Xabi Alonso. Before him, it was De Zerbe for about eight weeks. Before him, it was fucking Eric Ten Hag. And he's talking about bringing him in. Why, why do we have to give him Saudi money? What are we, ta are we talking about? His salary? Let's just bring Xabi Alonso in and make him the highest paid manager in the world. Jesus Christ, did Ed Woodward write this? Eric Ten Hag was the previous guy. He was the guy. He was the hipster choice doing an absolute madness resurrecting a club and this, that, and over. But also, why are we just guaranteeing random people five years? Why not give the guy that's actually in charge right now and actually proven when he can get 11 fit players that he can actually do something with Manchester United? Why Jabby Alonso? And I'm not even coming to the fact he's a fucking Liverpool player. Fuck! Eric Ten Hag, 2019-2022. Here's some headlines. ESPN did this. Like, Ten Hag is working wonders at Ajax. He's basically reinvented football. This is when they got to the Champions League semi-final, by the way. And he's talking about two centre-halves under six foot. Well, that never worked for starters. A goalkeeper that was turning 38. He had a Finnish striker that was top scorer in the Champions League. No club that had created more chances in the Champions League. Fruits of the Champions League uh, knockout stage with a 100% record playing total football. This guy was the hipster choice. You can't just throw away this hipster choice and go and get this week's fresh hot deal. And he's a Liverpool player. I, from afar, I am I'm very much enjoying what Xabi Alonso is doing. But Jesus, wet man. If you've got... I, I mean, is it... What I don't the Saudi the Saudi money thing. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Are you saying give him transfer money, right? Because I'm going to be honest. This is Richard Keys, director of football. I want a cheap mode amount of money. So does everyone fuck with? 
Is that the solution to a problem? Wow, was your Paul Knight right in that? I want unlimited wealth and I'll fix it. Well done, fucking genius. I think this might be Richard Keyes' shittest idea. And I dare you to Google some of his shit ideas. With his daughter's friend. Yesterday I tweeted this. And I, that was following uh, Sky Cover doing his um, interview where he has no idea what word comes next in his sentence. It smelt like bullshit as it came out of his mouth, didn't it? Realistically. So I, I tweeted that. And then I followed it up with, actually, the next time Sky roll up, here's what I'm thinking. Someone at the door of Carrington says, hey, um, can I get the name of those 50% of the players? Uh, and if you can't remember or oh, don't know it was, it was in me over jacket, then you're banned until you fucking remember. And then United did it. <laughs> Cave from Sky, everyone's favourite troll from the MEN. And then a couple of people that we actually like in uh, David McConnell and Rob Dawson. A little bit of collateral damage. Sometimes it happens. I've, I've all been banned from joining Pre Ten Hag's press conference. Uh... And I'm here for it. Uh, Ten Hag in a press conference actually came out and said, they should have come to us first and not go behind our backs printing articles. That is not the right thing. We have a good relationship. They come to us beforehand and we have a debate about it. I think it's more about the fact that they didn't go and try and check any of the information and they just went fucking splash that across the papers. And I am here for it. Here's the thing. I've been talking about this for a little minute and I absolutely believe it. Sir Alex Ferguson was a bully and... It was required because if you see the shit that gets spoken about about Manchester United on a m multiple times per day basis, it's about time someone had a pair of bollocks and said, hey, if you're going to continue to slander the football club, we're not going to invite you to our little press conference gathering. United have got zero requirements to allow you or you or you or that guy into any of their press conferences ever. You've got no right to be there. It's a private company, and if they want to bring in anybody, then guess what? They can bring in who the fuck they like. So, these are the rules. Take your fucking shoes off when you come in my house, or you can watch from the fucking window outside. Okay, pumpkin? Do you know what? One of the most important things to remember amidst all of this lot is this set of players. Roy Keane told you. He, saw, he said a lot, to be fair. He says more as it goes on. But he was right on this. He was absolutely bang on on this. That this set of players have thrown multiple managers under the bus and if you give them the opportunity, they'll do it again. You have to have a complete cultural reset. You remember under Oli, he was too soft. And now under Ten Hag. What in the living fuck of Goldilocks do these players want? Look, at the end of the day, turn up, work your bollocks off in training, put a shift in on a Saturday afternoon at three o'clock and stop talking to the fucking press. That's all you're required to do. Stop with the PR games. And actually, there's a chance that some of this might even be the club, as much as it is the players. But either way, all of you, stop talking to the fucking press. Just get on with your fucking job. Do the best that you can do. As Manchester United fans, we back managers and we back any player that gives 110%. And if you're not in that category, then you can get fucked. All right? In a bit.